Hello everyone, how are you doing today? I'm back with another video and in today's video we have an Acer laptop. This one is an Acer Aspire, 5, Aspire 3 lineup and this tool comes with an iCore 3 engine CPU and the exact model for this one is an A315-56-1 38 TB that number is right over here or you can see the model number which is N19C1 N19C1 is a general uh, model number so it can be a little different from inside but the exact model that you will know is this one right over here but this applies I'm going to show you in this video how to open it up how you can repaste and service and this applies for any Aspire 3 A315 series so yeah the tools that you're going to need for maintenance or servicing is first workshop towel. I'll leave the link for this one in the video description for all the tools that I use. You'll need a thermal paste. I'm going to be using an Arctic MX4 or you can get the new one which is an Arctic MX5. Or if you want to go a little crazy, you can get the Thermal Grizzly Cryonaut, which are really high end brands. But for these models, like a MX4 is way better. It's still good. And the other thing that you need is a screwdriver set. I'm going to be using an iFixit screwdriver set as it's my, one of my favorite tools to use. And we're going to be using Philips number zero from this tool set. You need an opening tool. If you purchase the Pro set, you get an opening tool, tweezers, and a few other stuff. But if you don't want to get the Pro set as I didn't, you can get the, for opening tool, a guitar pick. A metallic one is really good for opening cases and covers. You need a curved tweezers. It's really handy to have one. And based and also the most important one is an alcohol. Isopropolic or isopropolic alcohol. Which is right over here. Isopropolic alcohol. With this on hand, we can get it started. So what we want to do, we want to power off the laptop completely. And at the bottom of the laptop, you're gonna remove all the screws that you see on the bottom. Go ahead and remove all the screws. Also, if you guys like my content, if my content is helping you guys out through your own service, cleaning, upgrades, you can support the channel by clicking that like and subscribe. I really appreciate it and it helps and motivates me to make more videos, take requests, answer your questions in the comment area. I really appreciate it. All the screws on the bottom cover are the same size and height, so don't worry about mismatching this. Well, and the one in the middle, don't forget that one. All right. Once you remove all of the all the screws, now what you want to do, you want to stick the opening tool between the top and the bottom cover, just like that. And you want to twist it outward, just like that. And you want to hit those clicks. Those are the clips that are getting loose. I forgot to screw right in the middle. And go all around towards the corners and do the side. You want to hear those big cranks noises? That's the case getting loose. So don't worry, you're not breaking anything. Once you got the front end and the side opened, all you need to do is to lift up from the front end and wiggle it around, lift it up slowly, gently, and the back end should come out loose once you wiggle it around. Or if it's not coming out loose, you can work the same thing that you do on the side, on the back end. Bring it by the grill, and stick it right there, and twist, twist, and it will release itself. All right. Now we can remove the bottom cover and here you might have a dust mesh, clean yours, this one doesn't have any dust mesh. You can grab a toothbrush, clean it with a toothbrush. All right, down here you can see the hole inside the big battery, the mechanical hard drive, the solid state drive, RAM, Wi-Fi and the heatsink and the CPU right over here. There is no GPU in here, this one has only CPU. First before we do anything we want to disconnect the battery, to disconnect the battery remove this kit. And gaffer's tape, that's what they call it. It's a gaffer's tape, remove it, put it to one side. You want to pull this jack backward, put your fingernails if you have on the side of the jack and pull it back evenly. And then the jack will get disconnected. 
Next, we want to remove the heat sink. We have to remove the X clamp right here. There's a three screws that holds it towards the motherboard. And the screws are really short screws, the same size. And remove the screws. Once you remove the screws, the heat sink should come out pretty easy. Now, this is the funny part. I don't get it why they do this. They actually cut one portion of this heat sink right here that's supposed to get over and touch this die right here. There is no thermal pad or, any, or thermal paste, nothing in here. And I'm thinking there's a defect in the fabrication because you can see the die over here finishes right here, right over here, and up to here. And this extra portion, which has a thermal paste, supposed to be on this side. So what happens in the manufacturing? The heatsink manufacturer thought the CPU would be have at the orientation with this die over here. So they designed the heatsink that should hit the secondary die, which is right over here. It should hit it right there. But the motherboard actually flipped the CPU and located the die, secondary die on the left side instead of on the right side. So we much did 180 degrees. And they did not inform the heatsink company or manufacturer and the manufacturer gave them this one with a three apply thermal paste that goes all the way to this side if that's supposed to hit the secondary die. So this is a big defect on this ones and they actually they don't care about it. That's why you get a really bad overheating sometimes. All right, because the secondary die is for the GPU graphics and that's the problem with this ones. So what are we gonna do now in first? Uh, you can also remove the fan to clean it up, remove the two screws. You don't have to remove the fan, you can use a toothbrush to clean it right in there. But with two screws removed, you can take it out, remove the gaffer's tape, and pull the jack back. There's a tiny that slides out. And you can take it outside and blow some air with a toothbrush, you can clean it up. Put it back in together, bring it on. Slap in the jack, just slide it right in there, close in and put the gaffer's tape right over there we go. and put the two screws for the fan i'm not gonna waste you guys time and go and clean it right now you guys get the idea just with a toothbrush cleaner blow air through it i'm gonna reopen this and clean it outside but right now let's go ahead and clean up the thermal paste right here so what do you want to do you want to cut piece of the workshop towel grab it and nicely soak it in an alcohol and let's go ahead and remove the old thermal paste. There we go. So you can see nicely, it's right there. Now we're going to clean up the thermal paste on the CPU. And there we have. So let's go over and do our measurements, and you will see what I'm talking about. So I'm measuring the screw holes for these ones here the, on the risers is at the same height. So if we took this die over here, put it right here, it will align perfectly on the heat sink. So there was a miscommunication between the CPU motherboard manufacturer and the C uh, heat sink manufacturers. So they flipped the CPU, they did not um, hold them or they probably designed it that way around. So which, this way around, it covers both of them nicely. It covers exactly, if I'm measuring the screw holes here, Go straight over, both dies are covered with a heat sink. So once I go this way, you can clearly see that secondary die is right over here and is not even touching this uh, heat sink. So, yeah. Anyway, once we clean it up, we're gonna grab the what's called thermal paste. We're gonna put one drop thermal paste in there. Now there's a little solution that you can fix this one with. You can get a, a thermal pad about 0.3 millimeters thermal pads. This and the thickness of the this sheet right here. This is about 0.3 millimeters thickness, and you want to put it right beside it in here, so it can hit the secondary die. So you can cut it out and place it on a secondary. A little bit of the Thermal pad. Alright, so you can grab the, the thermal pad, put it right beside it, right there, 
so that will give you a little bit of uh, elevation for it so it can reach and cool itself on the heat sink thermal pads are not the same as a the same effect that gives you the thermal paste again there's this kind of plastic in here that's supposed to go under the fan so it's better for you guys to remove the fan put the heat sink first before you put the fan otherwise you're gonna block the airflow by folding that plastic so move this one away put this one on top and screw it down now you can grab the fan and bring it over and put it right on top so that way the plastic cover on the bottom stays under the fan and it will not block the airflow all right once we finish with that now we're going to plug in the jack for the battery evenly make sure i'll repeat evenly has to go straight in don't put it sideways anything like that otherwise you're going to make it short and then put this stupid capped on tape i mean capped on the tape right on top and the last thing down here would be to grab the top cover or the bottom cover in this case and push it down push the corner pinch them down on the back side open it up and grab your two fingers and pinch them make sure you hit those clicks on the corners on the sides and on the front and the last thing would be to just grab the bottom screws and slap them right on the cover again i hope you guys like this video if you have any question or request feel free to leave them in a video comment as always i'll try to answer them as soon as i can don't forget to click that like and subscribe as always thanks for watching and i'll see you guys in my next video just gonna finish up putting up the screws